Fairly soon, uh, the first list of recommendations has to do with asset protection. So that's where I call the traction. The satisfaction becomes as soon it begins to show up as soon as you feel the traction of making the first decision, the second decision, the third decision, the third, fourth decision. And those usually it's about eight different things that were going to be done in the asset protection uh, stage uh, of the work that we do. So the good news is it doesn't take that long. So that's part of making certain that we're executing uh, everything that we that makes sense uh, to execute. And uh, usually the, mem the momentum begins there. Uh, and uh, the enthusiasm starts building for going on to the next steps. Yes, in other words, there's four, I call them four sets of recommendations. The first set of recommendations is the asset protection recommendations. There can be as many as 12, sometimes even 13. More often than not, it's about eight uh, on the uh, uh, lifetime income. If a person is not yet retired, we're on a trajectory. We set, a, set up a trajectory that gets us to where we want to get by retirement. And then we, we see how much resources we're going to have at retirement, whether they're going to be quote-unquote enough. And so that's, that's going to be, you know, it might take 10, 15 years, whatever it is, to get there. Then we begin the retirement planning portion of it about four or five years before then we, be having, we start having different discussions. Uh, so asset protection is the first stage. The second stage is putting in place the lifetime income trajectory if you're not uh, retired. If you are retired, we put the lifetime income trajectory in place from retirement forward and all the different things that need to happen for that. It's very important because we're man the, what we can manage is risk. What we can manage is taxes. Uh, you can't manage the market. Uh, the behavior of the market is 100% predictable. I always like to tease. It's always going to be going up and down. So we're not so concerned about the behavior of the market. We're concerned about our behavior. What are we going to do when the market goes up? What are we going to do when the market goes down? What are we going to do when the market goes nowhere? So that's risk management. So most of the diverse, the reason you have diversified investments is because you're trying to manage risk. Because risk is a cost. It's a hazard. Hazards are costs. And you also manage taxes because that is a huge part of uh, one of the biggest expenses there are. You also manage uh, expense ratios. You also manage turnover costs, you manage advisory fees cost. All those things are costs that are uh, taken into account in that diversified portfolio. So there's quite a bit uh, to do there as well. Usually the estate planning portion of it is the fulfillment of their dreams for their life. The first three stages of asset protection, lifetime income, and diversified investments is all about you and uh, the, the, the benefits that you're going to get from, from having, uh, behave, by behaving properly and behaving in a way that is conducive to the enjoyable life that you want. The estate planning portion of it adds a huge additional frosting layer, I like to call it, of recognizing that you can build something that is going to outlist, outlive you. And that's an added bonus, if you will, that brings a higher level of satisfaction that you weren't here on earth just to breathe some air and then not. Uh, you can actually build something that that will reflect your values and have an impact on lives long after you're gone. So folks uh, usually really enjoy that. Uh, uh, and, and, and they enjoy it in the moment, not merely in a psychological sense, but they can enjoy it because they can actually begin making the gifts with confidence that they're not going to undermine their own life and they can see the joy 
being received by either their family or the causes or the people they care about, they can see the joy and the impact that they're making today. And that has a, a level of fulfillment that uh, is, I, I suspect, an enviable thing for most people. Yes, uh, it is very typical that, and but usually it's a it's a nebulous dissatisfaction. It's a it's, they're not quite certain why they're not happy, even though they've got several million dollars. Why is it that they're still they're still not feeling financially secure? And usually it's because of the, there's not a comprehensive approach that is making all the assets uh, take them to where they really can go. In other words, I'll just use a couple examples that just popped in my mind. Uh, both examples were over five to six million dollars, and they imagined that the five or six million dollars would have given them a lot more satisfaction than they're feeling. It's a little like I worked so hard, and how come I'm not feeling uh, uh, the satisfaction that I thought I could? And they find out it's because it, again, it's a patchwork quilt of different things that uh, sounded and felt good at the time. And there's no rhyme or reason. There's no in, in, integration of the different things that they have in place. And when they find out that when you integrate things and you coordinate it in a way that each uh, domino, if you will, helps the next domino, you find out that you can do a lot more uh, than you thought was possible. So that's where the where, where we try to make a huge distinction between the difference between doing something and doing something well, I like to say, is a big difference. It's a little like going to the, to the I don't go to the horse races, but the, the winning horse at the horse race gets a million dollars, and the, the second one who lost by a nose gets a consolation prize. The difference between doing something and doing something well, it can be a very big difference, and that's where we like to shine. I call it getting all the heavy lifting done. Uh, usually there's enough done that you get, obviously the client can call, you can call, call anytime you want with any kind of question or reassurance or did, what did you mean about that or tell me about the rabbits again, tell me why that was such a great idea. Um, but usually it's set up in such a way that it should be once meeting once a year to see how far on track or off track uh, things are that's usually the, the fun part is that if you do all that heavy lifting up front it becomes a lot easier for going forward you know now how to operate you're also not distracted by all the noise there's so much work that is done that you now can take information that is thrown at you by the television or by talking heads or, or an article that you read and you now have a resource to call. I'm, I always recommend clients call me with the here's what I'm thinking of doing questions instead of the here's what I did questions. And when you do, you'll find that we encourage you to read, to, to get knowledgeable, to expose yourself to as much as possible. Because when you do, it reassures you that the choices you made are aligned to what's important to you. The more you know, the more you feel good about the things that you're doing. So in that respect, we're open, and, and that usually happens the first, second, third year. And come about the fourth or fifth year, uh, most folks are, are it's, it's an overstatement to call it cruise control, uh, but they're, 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 they're enjoying life the way they ought to. The whole idea was how do I get to enjoy the life I want without having to be looking over my shoulder all the time as to whether or not there was a stone that you should have uh, looked under that, that wasn't. And that's our job. Our job is to make certain that we we looked at everything, all kinds of ways, to make sure that you get to live the life that you want. So it doesn't end, um, but our job is to make it a lot smoother from that point forward. When, me, when folks stop to think about what, is it is, what it is that's important about money to them, the most common initial reaction is a very practical answer. 
It's to make certain that their bills are paid, that they that their uh, the lifestyle that they become accustomed to continues, continues forever. And of course, once that's done, they if, if they ask them to imagine that having been accomplished, what does that allow them? What does that do for them? And usually they find they get to think about that for a moment or two and say, well, that allows me then to spend more time with my family. It allows me to give back to the community the way I've wanted to. It allows me to entertain activities that I wasn't sure that I could devote the kind of time and energy toward. And then as you envision doing those things, the question becomes, what is it that's important about being able to give back, to spend time with the family, to go on the cruises the way you want to go? And folks, again, the answers are a little bit different uh, with every person. But it's not uncommon for a person to then say, wow, if I'm getting to live a life like that, that's what allows me to feel that I'm living life the way it ought to be, that I'm fulfilled, that I'm growing, that I'm uh, that I'm not just breathing air, but I'm being an example to my family, to the people I care about. I'm exuding the values that that I live for. And ultimately, uh, how uh, it's almost like, wow, what else can I ask for? So if we can get you to that stage, uh, and we love doing that, uh, hopefully you will come back and say, wow, you're right, I, get, I am getting to live the life that I want to. I'm not having to pick up the phone every time the market does this or interest rates or that or this guy's elected or that guy's elected. Uh, my, my, I know that uh, our, 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 we know that it, we're going to always be setting our sails to whatever wind comes down, down, the, down the pike. So you get to live the life you want for the reasons that are important to you. And that usually is the ultimate. Yes, I take that question as, in essence, what is the mark of success? What, what is the indication that we've succeeded in this? That's when AGW uh, and everyone in it has allowed you to live your ideal future. Our mission is to have you live your ideal financial future. That's what we're about. Yes, absolutely. Uh, if it's something that's truly important to you, it really doesn't matter what it is, you naturally are going to seek allies and advice and resources and tools and whatever it takes to get there. And no one, none of us got to where we got by ourselves. We, we had lots of help from teachers and parents and friends and colleagues and uh, mentors. Uh, so the more allies you have, the greater the likelihood that you're going to succeed. So I, to say it in an opposite way, uh, the all-American uh, uh, myth of being able to do everything, I can do the lawn, I can, be, uh, I can do the taxes, I can have a business, do everything by yourself is really, it is a myth. Uh, I find that most successful people have an enormous number of people around them that they turn to uh, for confident guidance and confidence coaching and confident mentoring, uh, even just to bounce ideas off of. Uh, so yeah, the more I have found that the, 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 the sooner I put my ego in my back pocket uh, and turn to, to even someone on the street can help sometimes. Uh, so. Uh, stop, I, I st stop pretending that I knew it all a long time ago when I found out how limiting that is because what I know is very limited compared to what, um, what I can learn from everyone else. Call Advisory Group West. 
we really enjoy what we're doing. We're very good at it. Nothing makes us feel better, really, than helping you live your ideal future.